Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about modal and pop-up forms, what they are, how they're different, how to use them, and we're going to create a little notepad, a little sticky notepad that will sit on top of our Access Database window. Okay, so modal and pop-up, what's the difference? A modal form stays on top of other forms, and you cannot click on anything behind it. So for example, I've got customers and contacts. If I click on the contacts button, right, contacts button, it opens up my contacts form, which are all the contacts for that customer. Well, I don't want someone to be able to go back here and then change the customer because now I might think that these contacts belong to this customer. So you might want to make your contacts form modal. And you can do that very easily. Go into design view. Open up the properties for the form. Go to the other tab. Find there's pop up and modal. Find modal and change it to yes. All right. Save it. Close it. And now open it up again. Now, one thing you'll notice is the navigation pane snaps shut whenever you open up a modal form. That's by design. But remember, your end users aren't going to see this anyways. Right? We always hide the navigation pane from our end users. And if you don't know how, then go watch my simple security video and I'll tell you all about it. All right, but once this modal form is open, I can't click behind it. If I try, access is beeping, hear it? I can't do anything with anything else behind this until I close the modal form, and then everything goes back to normal. All right, so that's a modal form. Use that so that the user can't change anything that this form might rely on behind it. Okay, where you want them to fill in some information that they have to do before they can do anything else. All right, that's the benefit of a modal form. Now, a modal form is different from a pop-up form, in that you are allowed to click behind a pop-up form. So you can use this, for example, for a notepad that we're going to build in a second, right? You might want to click on it, open up the notepad, move that over to the side, but yet still continue to work with your database as normal. So let's make a little notepad. Let's close this guy. Let's make a table, create table design, just a simple table to store our notes in. We got a note ID, an auto number, and then notes, and this will be long text. Save that as my note T, my note table, primary key, sure. Okay, I can close this, close this. Let's borrow my continuous form that I already have built. If you haven't watched the video where I build this tech help free template, go watch that now. It explains where all these blank template forms came from. You'll find links to all these free videos down below in the description below the video. All right, but I'm going to copy my continuous form here. Copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll just call this note F, my note form. All right, we'll design this guy, design view. Okay, now I don't need that. I don't need that label. In fact, I'm gonna turn the form header footer off. Okay, let's change the detail background color to yellow. Let's go with that yellow there. That's, that's really bright, so let's drop that down. Go to more colors, and we'll make it a little more subtle, like there. Oh, that's much better. Okay, this guy too. Let's change the color of that. We can use the same color. Okay, now we got to bind the note form. Go to data. We got to bind that to my note T. So now that form is connected to the note table. Anything that I put in these fields in here will save in that table. And we got to bind this field to our note field. So go to control source and change that to notes. I'm also going to change the name. Copy, paste. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, slide it over there. Make this as wide as you think you're going to want it. Maybe about that wide. All right, let's bring in that edge of the form over here. Bring that over there. And if you don't know how to do all these little form techniques that I'm showing you, watch my Access Beginner 1 course. It's four hours long. It covers all the basics, form design, formatting, tables, queries, all that stuff. Go watch this. If, if anything that I'm doing right now looks unfamiliar to you. Okay, but now I got this. Let's save it. Actually, let's make this note feel a little bit bigger, right? Because this is going to be a long text. So let's make it bigger. There we go. Save it. Close it. And now when I open it back up again, there's my notepad. Okay. And I can slide it over here and I can do stuff. Oh, but wait a minute. I want that notepad to stay on top of other windows, right? So that's what the pop-up form does, All right? Go to design, go to other, set pop-up to yes. All right. Save that. Close it. Close it. Now when I open up my notepad and I open something else up, look, it stays on top of it. And the benefit of that is you could put it anywhere in your database window, or 
You can even move it outside the database window itself. See that? Here's access, right? This guy sits on top of access. It's got a higher Z index. What is Z index? Well, that's up and down on your screen, right? You got X, Y going uh, left, right, up and down. Well, Z goes basically in and out, right? A higher Z index means it sits on top of other windows. Okay, and you can put your notes in here, right? Uh, buy new photon torpedoes and whatever. And you can put as many notes in this little notepad as you want. And you can stick it up in the corner of your screen and use it whenever you want to use it. Now, one thing I don't like about the pop-up property is that if you have a multi-monitor setup like I do, this guy might pop up anywhere, okay? If I have the database window on a different screen and I open it there, this guy might be on screen two. It's wherever you last left it. So what I like to also do, and oh, and that's another bug too. See, I just went into design mode and it, it went right up here in the corner and it's almost like minimized. That's a, like a glitch in access. That's been around forever. They haven't fixed it. I've said something to them a couple times. <laughs> but what I like to do is I like to set the auto center property. Go to format. Auto center by default is no. By default, access tries to remember where that form last was. Auto center will start it right in the middle of your access database window. All right, so if I open it now, boom, it goes right there. Okay, and I like that for pop-up windows. You want them, you know, front and center in the middle of your database, not popping up possibly on some other screen. If you only got one screen, it's not a big deal. Okay, but you can resize it. You can then move it over here, put it where you want it, close it. Okay. And now here's a trick with both of them. Both pop-up windows and modal windows still allow you to access the ribbon and all the toolbars and stuff back there. But let me close. See, see this guy I opened this second. So this one is modal, right? And it's technically on top of this one because I can't click over here because I opened this one second. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. Modal windows work backwards. So the most recent modal window you open, if you open multiple ones, right, you got to close the top one first, which is this guy. Because you can open another window from a modal window. It's weird, right? If I had a button, if I make my customer form modal and then open this one, I have to close this one first. Okay, you get the hang of it once you do this for a little bit. But what I was trying to say is if you take a window and make it both modal and pop-up, if you set these both to yes, that locks everything behind that form. Okay, so now if I open that form up, all right, I literally can't click on the ribbon or anything behind it. All right, it's, it's, a, it's a straight dialog box. Okay, so if you want to make it so the user can't do anything aside from interact with this form, make it modal and pop-up. And I recommend setting auto center to yes. Okay. So that's modal and pop-up. If you want to learn more about these properties, I cover them more in my Access Expert Level 4 class. We go over in a little bit more detail. So there's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted.
Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.